Good morning, gentlemen. In our series of uh, endeavor to bring common knowledge about Services Selection Board to all, we would be discussing a phenomenon called personology. This is the term which was given by Murray himself. It simply means understanding of an individual in its full complexity. If what he says that uh, as per Murray, this is some every individual who is on the earth has got certain needs. And as per him, there are 27 psychological needs are there. But you will appreciate needs are never met in full. Or probably may not even be, be met because there's certain amount of problem which will always be in its path. Say, let's take an example of a river. River is flowing and if so, and its need is to flow. And if there's some, some stoppage comes in between the form of band or anything. So that is the press. So similarly, we have got certain need as an individual. There are certain problems which prevents us from achieving our need. And then behavior pattern that we show because of this conflict between need and press, there's always a disequilibrium. And the individual is then driven to engage in some sort of behavior pattern to reduce the tension to the extent possible. As I will give an example of the river itself. So what does the river do? If there is some stoppage in repair or bund comes into play, it has one way to stop and be created as a dam. Second is to wash it away. Third is succumb it. Similarly, if there is a problem in our, uh, there is a some problem which comes into our way of achieving our need, then and some, then ways one is to confront it. Another is to suppress it and succumb it or find some other means. But our aim should always be like an electron to come back to minimum energy level state. We can't afford to remain in a higher state of tension. We would like to reduce the tension to the extent possible. So what he said that uh, and in, uh, every psychologist, if he wants to understand individual, he must understand, he must study a normal individual. And he also believed that our behavior is interactive because environment plays its own role. And in personality, it is the brain, which is the locus of personality. What we are and what we want to be, it all depends upon our thought process. So there is certain amount of biological basis to the personality, which is given by some of the theorists uh, of personality as well. So what is personality? As per him, personality is an abstraction of formulated by a theorist. Means the people who are studying the uh, studying personality, they extract. This is what makes the fundamental of uh, personality, that you extraction. You extract different individual and find out what is common to all, but makes him a different person and makes his personality. It reveals series of events that ideally span over lifetime. And it is not that if I have behaved probably in a rude fashion today, I have got bad personality. No. It is the continuous and occurrence in uh, some form or other from childhood to adulthood, which is going to determine our personality. It reflects novel, unique, recurrent, and enduring patterns of behavior. It may be education, it may be training. Personality, as we have already said, it's located in our brain because it's the brain which uh, makes us you know, think. It, we, are, we imagine start thinking, imagine something about it. Our perception changes, so it is the brain which is most important in the personality part. The personality comprises the person's central organizing and governing process, whose function is to resolve conflicts. This is what we always endeavor to do. Satisfy all our needs. And finally, plan for our future goals. So the core of personality 
as far as uh, Simon uh, is fluid concerned, he had certain amount of concurrence with the father of psychology that is fluid. He agreed on the structure which was given by fluid. Agreed in existence of it, ego, and superego. It was repository of all innate compulsive tendency which provides energy, provides energy and direction to behavior and concern with the motivation. It contains primitive, amoral, and lustful impulse like as Freud had said. He agrees to that extent. Similarly, Freud also said that we use instincts. We got life and sexuality as a primary motivation. He agreed to some extent to that. He also recognized the existence of internal conflict that compromises its or often uh, its uh, com if it's, uh, that compromise is often necessary. The core of personality similarity with Freud again is that added he added two more stages to what Freud had said. First stage he called claustral. Claustral complex is a desire to be warm, dark, safe, and in scheduled place. It is it is now it is the state before uh, a child is born because it remains in the mother's womb. It remains want to be safe, warm, so that they can survive. And what are the traits are expressive passivity and withdrawal. They would like to as lowly in energy as possible. Then you referral. That is it is the stage as far as the stages of fluid is concerned. It comes between oral and anal stage. That is one, two, three years. One, two. So that is the stage is comes into it. The urinary apparatus is the erogenous zone, and primary activ activities involves urinary display. So that is the erectile zone. And he came back with the concept called erectile complex. That is excessive ambition, exhibitionism, distorted sense of self belief. And major differences remains an anal character type traits. So they know anal expansion or our uh, our retention. There are the two complexes which Kuhl has said. Okay, what is difference uh, from fluid? He simply said the conflict is not eternal. It's not permanent. Conflict are if there's conflict, it cannot last long. It has to die somewhere. It has to end somewhere. Personality develops to reduce that conflict. And with the passive time, either it gets resolved or you tend to live with it. It has non-selfish needs such as love, affiliation and achievement. So it cannot always be bad, negative. Superego what he had said is not always in conflict with the id or does it only in internalize authority figures. No. It also has ego differs by its inclusion of seeking to express socially acceptable id needs. So existence of non-conflict zones, planning and executive function which allows for rational thought and accurate perception to reduce the tension to the extent possible. So that the aim is again to reduce the tension. Personality development takes place. Uh, he did not relate description of psychosexual development uh, to the theory of motivation. They were not well described in explaining his needs. This was one of the problem. No explanation of how the personality code becomes expressed in unique personality. He couldn't afford to describe it to that extent. Okay. Personality periphery, he talked about. Behavior is a function of person and the environment. They what he firmly believed it. Therefore, we study an individual behavior, people and environment to understand the personality. We cannot go into what he's thinking about it. What we can infer is based upon the behavior pattern that he has he is showing, based on the environment, the amount of effect with the environment has had, had on the individual. Okay. 
Then he talks about analysis of behavior is he talks in terms of what they call proceedings and serials. Proceeding is the basic unit of behavior. It is a time-limited interaction between the person and the object or a person to person. Time-limited. When the way I interact, you come to me, I talk to you in a friendly manner or in a probably no unfriendly manner. It's a time-limited. And that interaction only for limited. It is not permanent. So there's a time-limited interaction between person. It, it will not be the person also. They may be, you know, looking at some object. I get annoyed. I feel happy. Look at a flower. I become happy. So the subject, so it interaction is between the person and the environment or the object, person to person also. Okay, next. And this interaction which takes place temporarily with a person or an object is the smallest unit of behavior. At the goal orientation of the person activity is either internal or external. Internal can be Depending upon my thought process, if I go and fight him, probably, you know, I am, I'm going to lose the battle. Can you external? You start fighting with the person that's external. A series of proceeding of such events over a longer period of time, such as marriage, friendship, or a career in business, etc. Uh, it, it has got certain, this is what is, so these particular proceeding adds up. A series of process, series of events which occurs in our life, that is what is going to de decide our behavior pattern. Then he talks ordination. Ordinance means by which a person chooses and enacts a plan with a specific mind. It is the executive branch of thinking. That is called ordination. Serial program sets up system of sub goals and schedules to time action in order to avoid conflicts between competing needs, ordinary arguments of serial that lead to some goals. Why do we say competing needs? Say, for example, I'm hungry and I have to go and appear in examination that I want to achieve something. So that the two needs are there. Hunger is one. So there's a company. What should I do? Schedule refers to device for reducing number and intensity of conflicting conflict among competing needs, competing needs. If the two needs are there, I'll give an example around there. Which one should take the priority? Timing of behavior to satisfy various needs. That is what we schedules. So what we are thinking, what we are doing in, as a management, this is what our personality does it automatically. I may or may not be aware of it. And uh, Capability is decided based on the ability and achievements to achieve something different. A person needs to be creative and imaginative to compose and construct if he or she is to remain psychologically healthy. So you, all of us will have to create. All of us are creative in some form or the other, in some way or the other. Creative imagination may be strongest feature of a personality and the one that it often gives the least opportunity to express itself. Then comes what you call personality dynamic, primarily a motivational psychology. Okay, it is the representation of human striving, seeking, desiring, wishing, and willing. That is called personality dynamic. We all, we, are, we can't be sitting idle. We are trying to achieve something. We want something new. We have got certain desires. We have got certain wishes. We like doing something. So it is, it is, that is the dynamics of personality. That is what he wanted. Now, understanding of the directional tendency is uh, fundamental to understanding a human behavior. He says, the most important thing to discover about an individual is the superordinate directionality or directionalities of his activities, whether mental, verbal, or physical, means what we are trying to, what we are trying to go on, which direction am I going to go? That is what we call directionality. So this is what the personality, this is dynamic, these are the uh, personality dynamics. Okay. Then we did talk about the need. What is need? Need is a force located in the brain 
that organizes various psychological processes so as to change an unsatisfied condition. I just give example, I'm hungry. So that's the need. Okay. There are tendency to move towards the goal. So if I'm hungry, I must eat. That is my goal. Must find food. Unlike instinct, they are learned and they are concrete to everyday life. How do we know we are ob we are observing a need? Because that's especially for those who are looking at the per someone else's personality. Is the end result of the behavior, particular pattern of the behavior, fact the person attends and responds to a in a particular class of stimuli, person expression of a particular emotion, person expression of satisfaction or dissatisfaction at the end result, and person's subjective report of feelings, intentions, and goals. Needs may be hierarchical, related to related or in conflict, hierarchical. Or may have fused together. There are two or three needs may join up together. That's called fusing. That's called fusing of the needs. Okay. Next comes there are different types of needs. Murray himself gave five sets of cut or five categories of needs. First, he called visogenic or psychogenic. Does the need originate from the body or the mind? That is called visogenic. If it Origins from the mind equals psychogenic. And uh, except he gave it 27 needs, except for need for sex, the rest all needs that he has described, they are all psychogenic. Activity. This is a second category. is a process or model versus effect. If, what is effect? Emphasis on success to bring about result external to the activity. So if I perform something, I must get result. And if I do, sir, if I work, if I don't get result, then it's useless. So that is what is there. That is the process. Next is process. Pleasure in activity itself. I must enjoy whatever I'm doing it. That's the pleasure. Model. Satisfaction by excelling in the activity. It is not only performing. I must excel. And lastly, creative versus negative. The need to be to construct versus avoid or terminate. So that's the negative. I can't. You give up. So I can't do it. Another way of uh, describing different things they call primary needs and secondary needs. Primary need, which is zonic needs that we already talked above, are linked to the characteristic organic events and typically referred to physical satisfaction. You know, these are the needs for air, water, food, sex. Uh, lactation, urination, defection, they are all the primary needs or visceral or genic needs. Secondary or psychogenic, we have already talked about. Needs are presumably derived from the primary needs and are characterized by the lack of focal connection with any specific organic process or physical satisfaction. Illustration of these needs are acquisition, construction, achievement, recognition, exhibition, dominance, autonomy. Another way of looking at it, overt needs and covert needs. Typically expresses themselves in motor behavior. Means you start acting overt. You start acting. That is a motor behavior. You have to take this such action involved. Covert means <coughs> usually it belongs to the world of fancy. You start dreaming about it. Existence of covert needs is in large part the outcome of the development of internalized structures, or that is what was superego, that defines proper or acceptable conduct. Certain needs cannot be given free expression without violating the convention or standard that have been taken over from society by means of the parents or needs of the uh, covert needs around them. Suppose thinking, of, we have got mind, no. Everything may not be right. Our thought process, we have got positive as well as negative thoughts coming to our mind. <coughs> Next comes up. Focal needs and diffuse needs. Focal needs and needs closely linked to limited class of environment objects. Focal, you focus to do or something. That is what is, I want to achieve. I want to pass this exam. So that is the focal. You focus to that. Diffuse needs, generalized needs applicable to, I would like to live well. How? Do you want more money? You want good, more, more friendship? So that's a diffused. You do not know exactly what the needs are. 
generalized absence of fixation a need is always subject to change in the objects towards which it is directed. If I have got, say, 1,000 rupees, I would like to have 10,000 rupees. So this keeps changing. It keeps changing. Okay. Next called proactive needs and reactive needs. Proactive needs are response produced in the absence of any important stimuli. It's called proactive. It's, it is from within us. Ah. Uh, it is something the person you know, it's it is a person rather than something in the environment. It is from my within. It is my individual. That is proactive. I want to do something without any uh what is that uh, without any without any inkling or without any probing. Reactive it's I react. Someone is trying to threaten me, I'm going to react. So this response elicited by appropriate stimuli. So that is, someone is coming after me, probably I want to save myself. That is reactive needs. Okay, next. After they call process activity, modal needs and effect needs that we have talked again. So there's a, effect needs are uh, needs that lead to some desired state or end result. That is what is called effect needs. I want to get the end result. And process activity are tendency to perform certain acts for the sake of performing itself. The random, uncoordinated, non-functional operation of various process, vision, hearing, thought, speech, and forth. So all these particular things are called process activities. This year, function pleasure. I look at it, I'm happy about it. Then called modal needs. Involve doing something with a certain degree of excellence or quality. It is still the activity that is sought and enjoyed. It's rewarding and performed with a certain degree of perfection. So that is the different types of needs we've talked about. It. Murray gave, uh, I said 27 needs. Needs motivated by desire for power, property, prestige, knowledge of creative achievement, achievement, acquisition, aggression, construction, Counteraction, dominance, exposition, recognition, understanding. We'll talk about details about these needs later on in the next video. Then come motivated by affection, admiration, sympathy, love, and dependence. That's affiliation, deference, nurturance, sex, and succulence. Next is a need motivated by a desire for freedom change, excitement, and play. Autonomy, change, travel, adventure, excitement, dissipation, play mirth. And finally, he gave what he called miscellaneous needs. Abasement, blame avoidance, cognizance, harm avoidance, passivity, rejection, retention, sentience. Directional to behavior. You know, it's a vector quantity. They, what he will. It has got a vector. It's got vector and so as we say vector and scalar. See, it's a every all needs are have got certain direction to be followed. It has got a direction and intensity. The ability to not that how to define a vector. So he used the uh, Kurt Levin's uh, field theory to consider direction of behavior. And he considered the vector that the action tendency. We have the tendency to act. As I said, someone is trying to threaten me. I would also like to react. That is a vector. And values, you want to achieve something. So it has got so magnitude as well as direction. That's what we call a vector and analysis. Then, as I said, there are problems in achieving our needs. This we call as press. Press are properties of objects, people, environment that help or hinder the person in achieving his or her goal. That is what we call press. Press are two types, alpha press and beta press. Alpha are properties as they exist in objective reality. Beta are property as they are perceived by the person. Beta press are more closely associated with the person's behavior, person's, person's behavior. And how you can see, it's a basically beta is nothing but a perception. It's a perception. So first press is called Press of depri depri uh, deprivation. 
acquisition returns i want to acquire certain property i don't have money i want to hold on to my property if someone wants to snatch it off okay so that's called retention deprivation press descriptor of an empty alone or rejecting environment lack i don't have resources i don't have money to do anything how can i study loss i have i have acquired lot of money it has been no stolen that's a loss society have rejected me so that's a rejection so there's a they don't want me to perform so there's a there's a problem how can i perform so they are uncongenial environment i cannot change keep changing my house because if my neighbor is bad it is bad i have to live with it i cannot change my father i cannot change my mother i cannot change my friends so that's the, that is by environment by default it is available to me then press a caution and restrain dominance someone is stronger than me and he wants me to be subdued i have got no option impose task as a it may be father or maybe some boss or they say in office some they be boss you have to do the training otherwise in in school and college you have to perform otherwise you will not get marks then press description of a hostile aggressive environment aggression press of danger injury and death affliction death of hero physical danger physical injury then press of friendliness sympathy respect dependence love affiliation deference nurturance sex succulence and miscellaneous press are birth of offspring claustrum we have talked about it and then cognizance example exposition and lack so they are the different types of press okay international needs do not operate in complete isolation from each other as i said there is always overlap there is always overlap situation where two or more needs are aroused simultaneously and motivate incompatible response with the pre pond uh, pre potent needs just like pain hunger ordinary will take priority and animal a uh, minimal satisfaction of such needs is best necessary before other needs are operative for example uh mari you no know, employ the set of concept to represent conflict that is the intensity how what is the intensity of the conflict is there between the need and the press autonomy versus compliance i want to take my own decision and someone wants me to follow rules i want to achieve something and i want to enjoy also until i study put in hard work i cannot afford to do well in examination but that is has to be at the cost of pleasure so there is so there is always there is a dominant there is that the two needs are acting simultaneously and it preponderant the whatever needs just like say when i am feeling hungry so that has to be satisfied before i do go so some degree of satisfaction will have to be given to preponderant needs first okay next call future needs at a second as a multi needs may be gratifying by single course of action for example outcome different needs is behaviorally the same either i study or i listen to someone giving lecture either way aim is to pass an examination okay subsidization subsidiation is a subsidiary needs is one that operates in the service of another for example individual may show aggressive needs but these may be serving only to facilitate acquisition needs you must have seen every day in our society a person comes back with all sorts of weapon to acquire a land so the basic need is what basic needs acquisition that he wants to create acquire property and what he is using he is using aggression so that's called subsidiation in any instances where operation of one need is merely instrumental to get gratification of another we speak of the first need as subsidiary to the second one tracing chain of subsidiation can be a great value in understanding the motive of an individual then comes aim this confusion within aim is what represents the specific goal adopted by a person as an expression of the need 
So there is a confusion. Many people say need itself is aim. No. Need aim comes after need. So represents a specific goal adopted by the person as an expression of the need, a general need for dominance and a specific aim of being elected as the mayor of the city, as the mayor of the city. I want to so need is dominance. And I want to stand up in election and win election. So that is the aim. Aim becomes your getting elected. But the need is dominance. Then there were cath cathexis called the fluid concept. Refer to power of an object to evoke positive or negative need in a person. He claimed that a personality is largely revealed in the object that it cathects. Cathe refers to power of an object to evoke positive or negative need in a person. In this fashion, a reasonably adequate portrait of social personality may be composed. Now, look at this word again. Power of an object to evoke positive or of, to a negative need of a, in a person. Many times, you look at a person, I do not know, I don't even know. Look, I feel happy, or there's certain marks, I got certain doubts, but why does it happen? That equal cathexis. Okay, now next. <coughs> because of <coughs> interaction of the need and press, need is, and there's press is something stops from achieving my need. The water that's called thema. Thema, the interaction of need and press within a behavior unit is called thema. So it is the it is the connector between need and press. It connects both need and press. Interaction of a need and press within a behavior unit. So it forces me to behave in a particular fashion, and that is what is called thema. A sequence of thema. So that the first so every every need. And because of the press, there's a small behavior unit comes into play. And sequence of such themas or such behavior pattern describe a person's tendency to be in a particular way in situation involves certain needs and press. So that could see that. So is a collation of different themas, small, small unit behavior that he what he collated that becomes a serial thema. Need integrate that set of stable values and action pattern that are learned from a uh, need expression is called complex. A complex is a type of need integrated. So complex is certain amount of problems, certain amount of is a set of stable values and action pattern which you which can be predicted that is all complex. Now. So looking at the person, if I know his personality, he is going to behave in a particular fashion that becomes his complex. So complex is a need press combination that relates one of the five specific conditions of childhood, clustered, oral, and all particular things are there, and that is strongly influence adult development. So these complex, that is whatever our behavioral pattern is there, it starts from the birth and carries into adult and remains permanent, remains permanent. So development of individual differences, the unit thema. The source of interrelated needs acquired during the childhood. And the personality is then determined by two factors called genetic and experiential. As he said, maturational determines the timing of timing of events as well as the degree to which certain abilities can be developed in the best of environment condition. That equals gen is something, so it is genetic. Experiential, therefore environmental condition. These factors occur in the process of compromising one's own impulses with society's demand for socialization process. So genetics gives me initial. And then how we have behaved that we have talked with Thema, that small unit of behavior that has occurred and if I sum up all the behavior pattern, I start behaving in a particular way. That is what it becomes a personality. Okay. We talk about genetic maturational determinants are all behavior is biological in origin. origin. Personality development is psychometabolic in nature. Murray chose these terms to emphasize the biological process over structure. He's an anabolic and anabolic the building up process and catabolic is breaking down process. So 
psychological sites of motivation, delight us and distress us. We'll talk later on. Experien uh, experiential determines we move from central basic wants and fancies to achievement. So we have got skill acquisition, feeling of some smart competence we acquired, and then you transaction, pleasure obtained by, obtained by interaction with others. So we have got certain basic wants, then we want to be a fancy, I want to, this is what I want to be. Then you start, you want to achieve that by acquiring certain skill sets and certain competences around there. Then you would like to drop pleasure by interacting with others and telling this is what I have achieved. Okay, for the day, this is what we wanted to talk about. So this is the fundamental, gentlemen, to understand how should our reaction should be in any interview. And psychological tests are not only restricted only to substance selection board. It is, it is applicable to CSAT paper to in, uh, in uh, group A services as well in the interview. So this lecture was basically to understand basics. How should uh, we behave? How does our behavior pattern or our, how our personality is built up from initial? Okay, thanks. We'll come back with new videos next time. Thank you.